because at the end of the day no matter what you do the reality is that china frankly has already emerged as a great power i i don't buy the the conventional wisdom in the anglo-saxon media which is by the way always wrong on china in 1990 when the economists first predicted the coming collapse of the chinese economy in 1990 the chinese gnp was 360 billion dollars a few months ago the economists again came out with a story saying chinese economy is going the chinese economic growth is over but then it had grown to 18 trillion it had grown 50 times after 30 years of predictions of the coming collapse of china why do i emphasize that china's rise is unstoppable and is not driven by you or by me is driven by 1.4 billion chinese people and i'm sure you read the column by martin wolf in the financial times last week in which he said if 1.4 billion chinese people decide to become prosperous nothing can stop them and the chinese people have this great desire to do as well as the rest of the world and so they have china by the way china's economy has serious 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 problems uh, property bubble demographic challenges uh, uh, lack of investor confidence these are all real issues but at the end of the day what we have learned is that if there is one set of policy makers that seem to know how to fix their problems gradually it is uh, china now if you if you want me to answer your question directly uh, ovil about uh, president xi jinping i want you to know that again i want to go back to my point of 193 countries in the world almost no other country in the world passes judgment on the quality of the leader that they are dealing with they accept the fact that he is the leader and we have to deal with him good bad friendly unfriendly and frankly i want to tell you this if you don't mind very directly if you did a poll of 193 leaders and asked them in 2017 2018 would you rather deal with president xi jinping or would you rather deal with president donald trump but tell you 193 countries would vote in favor of xi jinping i'm serious so when you emphasize that oh it's a leader that's a problem it's not the problem you have to deal with a country and i can tell you this you know since i've spoken to many people especially in third world countries who have dealt with president xi they don't share your vision of president xi they see him as a sane sober rational predictable leader who is advancing china's interests quite effectively i mean at the end of the day you look at where china was when he took power 2014 where china is 2024 it has come a long way so we whatever we do we don't underestimate him or china by the way we also don't underestimate united states huh? i want to assure you that the respect for united states is deep and profound and very strong but in the same way there's also the same deep profound respect for china and we know we have to deal with these two great powers and actually we believe that the united states would be better off now don't call it engagement don't call it containment just deal with the reality the reality is that there is a strong great power like china and you have to live with it and then figure out what's the best way of living with it in a way 
that enhances America's national interest. And I would say for America to defend its national interest is perfectly legitimate. Perfectly legitimate. But in many ways, the world would be happier that if given the, all the, extra, the extraordinary challenges we are facing, for example, in climate change, you know, you're the expert on climate change. The, the most sensible thing humanity could do is to tell the United States and China, please, we have a bigger problem coming. If we burn up planet Earth, we have nothing left to live on. We're destroying the only ship we have. Why don't we press the pause button on this geopolitical contest? Frankly, it's less important than the global challenges we face. So if you ask me what the rest of the world thinks, they actually hope that the United States and China could find ways and means of dealing with their differences in such a way that it doesn't destabilize the rest of the world and allows us to focus on what's really important that's coming in the future. Professor Kishore Mahbubani is right. China isn't going to collapse anytime soon. First, China has a vast population that works as the country's key economic driver. Imagine the impact of a population over 1.4 billion strong. The sheer scale is staggering. With such a large base, China has an almost unmatched domestic market and workforce, allowing it to produce, innovate, and consume at levels many countries can't replicate. Think of it this way. If China were to focus only on domestic consumption, its market would still be more substantial than that of most countries. For instance, China is now the world's largest car market, with over 26 million vehicles sold annually, more than in the US and Europe combined. This kind of consumer demand fuels not only China's economy, but also draws in foreign companies that simply can't ignore such an enormous market. Companies like Apple, Tesla and Volkswagen invest heavily in China, knowing that losing access to this vast audience could mean billions in lost revenue. On top of that, China's workforce is vast and diverse, supporting everything from agriculture to high-tech industries. By harnessing this labor power, China has become the factory of the world, producing everything from toys to smartphones. But what's even more impressive is how this workforce has transitioned over time. In the past few decades, millions of Chinese workers shifted from rural, agricultural areas to urban, manufacturing hubs, providing the foundation for China's economic rise. And now, as China's industries advance, this workforce is once again evolving, moving from low-cost manufacturing toward technology-driven fields and service sectors. It's a scale of economic mobilization that few countries can match, and it's a significant reason why China continues to grow. Not only that, China also focuses on education and innovation. China has poured extensive resources into education, especially in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, creating a powerhouse of young engineers and scientists. Each year, over 4 million STEM graduates enter the workforce, about eight times the number in the U.S. And this is fueling China's progress in areas like AI, quantum computing, and green technology. Take Huawei, for example. Despite U.S. sanctions, Huawei remains a leader in 5G technology, supported by a robust base of homegrown talent. This shift to self-reliance is empowering Chinese companies to rely less on foreign expertise and build an ecosystem that's competitive on the world stage. China's educational investments aren't just filling jobs, they're fostering innovators to drive national growth. And most importantly, China has a strong, centralized and efficient government. China's centralized government operates on long-term, stable goals, unlike many Western nations where policies often shift with election cycles. For example, the Belt and Road Initiative, launched in 2013, is a multi-decade project to build infrastructure across Asia, Africa and Europe, connecting remote regions to global markets. Through initiatives like Made in China 2025, 
China aims to become a leader in high-tech fields such as robotics and electric vehicles. These long-term goals provide consistency that Western nations often struggle to maintain. With clear, enduring plans, China is steadily advancing in green energy, digital economies and technology without disruption from changing political climates. These factors create a powerful momentum for China's rise that isn't easily slowed, and it's a combination few countries can replicate. This unique blend has allowed China to weather challenges, navigate global competition, and continue building a foundation that seems almost tailor-made for sustained growth. Do you agree with our analysis? Share your thoughts and leave your comments below. If you like what you watched, hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more content.